so you want to be an emergency physician. Well, let's see what I can teach you in just over 12 minutes. Do you know your ABCs? I knew you did. Because in emergency medicine, our first thoughts when we look at a patient are A, B, C. A, airway, B, breathing, and C, circulation. Often, it is obvious that the patient's ABCs are okay. They are in no distress, breathing and talking easily, alert, and are well colored. Other times, it's not so obvious, and an experienced eye may only pick up that there is a problem. Perhaps they're snoring, or they can only speak in short sentences, or their skin is mottled. That is, there is a spiderweb-like pattern on their skin which implies poor blood flow. We must deal with the ABCs first before we can go on to any other problem, because if you're not getting enough oxygen, and the oxygen in your blood is not flowing adequately throughout your body, then the rest doesn't really matter, does it? This is how we approach all patients in the emergency department, and it is because we have an approach that we can remain calm when all hell is breaking loose with an ill patient. The patient's unconscious, bleeding on the floor, broken bones, doesn't matter. Deal with the airway first. Do a jaw thrust or chin lift to clear a passage from their mouths to their lungs. Place a tube into their lungs if necessary, which is called an intubation. Then, deliver oxygen to them via a bag or place them on a ventilator if necessary. A machine will breathe for them. Now, deal with the circulation. Do they have a pulse, blood pressure? Give them intravenous fluid or blood or do CPR or even deliver an electrical shock or defibrillation if need be to restart their heart. In reality, much of this is being done in parallel by different members of the team at the same time as opposed to in sequence. Once we've dealt with the ABCs, we can move on to the patient's other pressing issues. Okay, let's move down the body as we look at a variety of problems we would typically see in an emergency department. Remember that another characteristic of emergency physicians is that they are always on the lookout for red flags. Historical features provided by the patient, symptoms, or physical findings or test results that stand out from the ordinary, which raise concerns that there might be something more sinister going on, things which raise a red flag. How about headache? That's a common complaint. One thing I always tell residents and medical students is that a surprising number of sick people tend to congregate around hospitals. This can be understood when talking about a complaint like headache. When you're outside a hospital and someone tells you they have a headache, like, the kids are giving me a headache, or, not tonight honey, I have a headache, it is unlikely that the underlying cause of that individual's headache is some dangerous problem. However, if someone presents to an emergency department with a headache, within that group there will be a not insignificant number of people with a life-threatening problem. What are the red flags when it comes to headache? A headache bad enough to bring someone to hospital and someone who has never had a headache before. A thunderclap headache, or one which begins in seconds and is often referred to as the worst headache of my life. A headache with fever, or weight loss, or nausea and vomiting, unless that person has known migraine headaches and nausea and vomiting are typical for them. A headache in someone taking a blood thinner such as Coumadin, or a post-traumatic headache which is severe. Studies we might do in someone presenting with a headache may include a CT scan of the head, rarely an MRI, and often a lumbar puncture, which involves drawing some cerebrospinal fluid out of someone's back after freezing with a local anesthetic. This is not as bad as it sounds. Well, we're just over four minutes into my everything you need to know part of my lecture, and we're only making it to the eyes, so let's keep going. About those eyes, any acute loss of vision requires an ophthalmologist right away. Blurry vision can wait a bit in most cases. Eye pain or redness may require one but also may not. Floaters need to see an ophthalmologist but not necessarily right away. We cannot treat viral conjunctivitis, so you just have to wait it out. A middle ear infection usually gets better without antibiotics. 
Vertigo, worse with head movement, is an inner ear problem. You don't need a CT scan of your head for this unless you have a severe headache, double vision, or other neurological complaints. The only sore throat which requires antibiotics are those caused by bacteria, usually strep. If you are coughing, have a runny nose, and have tonsils without pus on them, or do not have enlarged tender lymph nodes, it is likely a virus. In any case, it's okay to await the results of a throat culture before treating, as we usually give antibiotics only to avoid long-term complications. Antibiotics don't get you any better, even if it's a bacteria, that much more quickly. Okay, take a deep breath. We're moving to the chest. Fever, cough, with or without chest pain worse when breathing, may be a pneumonia. But if it's just a bronchitis, don't expect antibiotics. They don't work, unless you're a smoker. Asthma is treated with puffers, like Ventolin, and pills like prednisone, which is a steroid, which is not a problem with short-term use. If an asthmatic looks bad or is making their second visit to a doctor for the same attack, admit them. A sudden onset of one-sided chest pain, worse with breathing, or associated with loss of consciousness or rapid heart rate, could be a blood clot in the lung, a pulmonary embolism. Risk factors for this are travel, recent surgery, cancer, family or a personal history of blood clots. There may or may not be an associated DVT, phlebitis or blood clot in the leg. A smoker presenting with a new cough, especially with weight loss and sometimes bloody sputum, may have a lung cancer. A cough with weight loss, night sweats and sometimes bloody sputum, with or without a fever, might be tuberculosis in the right individual. They need to be isolated until proven they do not have tuberculosis. Squeezing central chest pain, often radiating to the arms or jaw, could be angina or a heart attack. Even you know that. But patients often present in atypical fashion, so be vigilant for variable presentations. An EKG could be normal and you need to run blood tests, with one taken at least 8 hours after the onset of pain to be accurate. Some types of heart attacks need to be treated as rapidly as possible. Remember, time is muscle. We use either powerful clot-busting drugs or angioplasty to mechanically open the blocked coronary artery with a balloon. Beware a great mimicker, the aortic dissection. An aortic dissection is when the layers of the largest blood vessel, the aorta, start breaking apart and the aorta can eventually rupture. This classically presents with chest pain radiating to the back but can migrate and patients may have different blood pressures in each arm. You might diagnose this on chest x-ray but it may require other tests, like an ultrasound of the heart, or echocardiogram, or a CT scan of the chest. Beware, the treatment for angina or heart attack may kill someone with an aortic dissection. Moving down the body, we reach the abdomen. Here, possible problems depend greatly upon the age of the patient, and very often, the location of the pain. Pain in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen usually originates from the gallbladder, or less commonly, the liver. Central abdominal pain, above the umbilicus, can represent ulcer pain, gallbladder pain, or a pancreatitis, a potentially dangerous inflammation of the pancreas, which classically radiates to the back. An even greater danger lies from abdominal pain caused by an abdominal aortic aneurysm. This pain classically also radiates to the back, and sometimes we can feel a large pulsatile mass in the belly. You do not want to miss this one, as it is a killer. Not much causes pain in the left upper quadrant of the abdomen. A ruptured spleen would be one that you would not want to miss, but you usually consider this one when there is a history of trauma, with some exceptions.